Jerry Zayden with Catbird Racing here in Huntington Beach, California. We're going to start bringing you guys a lot more of these information videos about our product and what goes into our product because we feel we need to point out a lot of the extra things that we put into our product from the engineering to the quality to the back end kind of underneath the product that most people don't see from the outside. So the first product we're gonna discuss is our Canberg Ren housings we make. We make these with a three and a half inch tube and a four inch tube and we offer different snout sizes and different configurations. But first I'm gonna hit on the center section and why this is so important the way we construct this. So we have three pieces to the center section here and underneath this weld, this thing is internally ribbed. So when we put this together in our fixture, the way we have the ribs inside of here, this first weld right here dives into all the product. So the weld will hit the two pieces here as well as the back side of the rib internally. Um, that rib inside here, when you see up inside here, uh, then gets fully welded inside as well. So there's actually three welds touching that rib. All right, so this is the face plate of the housing here. So after all the welding, chuck this up in our CNC machine. We use a big fly cutter to flatten this out perfectly. So by doing that, when all the welding happens, it warps this thing. Now it's perfectly flat. Now we come in and drill and tap all the holes here. And the reason why we do that is because if we were to use the laser cutter to put in the holes and then go back and weld, all the metal pulls and pushes and goes to weird spots, all the holes would actually be off. And it would be difficult to just bolt the third member on there. So by machining this and doing the holes and the tapping, it ensures perfect quality on that. Another thing we do once that's done is we then pull it back into the fab shop and there's a couple of plates we install. We have this plate here that gets installed on the back as well as this plate here that gets installed on the bottom. And so what these plates are doing is tying in the sides to the center, also adding more material as this plate would be doing here to the bottom. And that's where all the rocks are gonna hit it and everything. So it adds a, a lot more armor to the housing there. And this plate on the back, as you see, it's gonna tie in all three pieces on the back as well. So it's not just there for a logo, there's actually a function to it. Well, now that you saw how we construct the center section, now we're going to get into the details of the actual rear end housings and the truss and the different things we're doing to them, as well as the snout sizes, bearing sizes, and axle sizes. So here's one of our four inch rear end housings. This one here actually has uh, the trophy truck three and a quarter inch bearing snouts that have been TIG welded in. Uh, we TIG weld the two and a half inch and the three and a quarter inch snouts. The two and a quarter snouts we MIG weld in and only offer those on our three and a half inch housings. So these housings here, uh, the four inch, this is four inch tube. We also offer them with three and a half inch tube. The four inch tube is a full 4130 chromoly housing from the tubing to all the plate and everything. The three and a half inch uses a different form of steel. It's a high tough steel that we use, uh, but we do still use the 4130 tubes. That is a must on these Ren housings. Um, if you do DOM or mild steel tubes are just gonna bend very easily, so we do not do those. Um, so I'm gonna explain on this four inch housing here. After all the center sections constructed, uh, we have a jig process where we stick in the tubes, those get welded in, and then we have the truss here. And you can see we use a round truss on here. And the reason for this round truss is look at it kind of like an eggshell. It's not hard edges that can buckle. It's got the round radius on here. And we've had really, really great success over all the years of building these these ways. Um, we've never bent one backwards. I've seen guys like tag rocks, rip off wheels, crash trucks, and yes, you can bend a snout or bend something that's gonna happen in crashing, but under normal use, we've never had a failure on one of these Rorens in over 10 years. Um, so now that the rear end would be all trussed and done and everything's good to go, now comes into the process of welding in the snouts. But before I get into the process of the snouts, I wanna discuss the actual snouts here. So on these snouts, we have different bearing sizes and different snout sizes here. So just to put in perspective the size difference, this is our two and a quarter bearing 
which is still a wider spread. So the distance from here to here is still bigger than any of what's called the GN or Grand National setup. This is about a half an inch wider than the Grand National setup. And what that does is it widens the bearings on here. And by widening the bearings on here, it has more deflection for your big tall tire when you have the side load. So the two and a quarter is now become basically like a pre-runner Ford Ranger Toyota size truck rear end. Most people these days are stepping into the two and a half inch and you can see the difference in size here is massive. So two and a half inch widespread is much wider bearing spread than the two and a quarter. And then we get into the three and a quarter bearing and this is what's on all the trophy trucks. And the reason why we go this big is to fit the axles. So now I'm gonna get into the axles here. This is a 35 spline axle, which is inch and a half, and this is a 40 spline axle, which is inch and three quarter. And as you see the sizes there, this is trophy truck. So you can see the difference of size between a 35 spline and a trophy truck, and a 40 spline that everyone knows to be a massive size axle still compared to a trophy truck. So the reason why we do the bigger snout is that axle will not fit through that hole, obviously. So the hole size that's a trophy truck axle, which is called the through hole, that's the difference in size. So if you can see the difference there, it's a massive difference. So a lot of people don't get to see these parts or understand why we do them, but that's the main reason for the different bearing sizes. Where when you look at your 35 spline, the oiling that goes around the hole when that axle centered, there's quite a bit of clearance there. Same with the two and a half, and both of those will run a 35 or a 40. Most people run the 35 spline when they do two and a quarter. Most people run the 40 spline when they do the two and a half. And then when they do the three and a quarter, we can still run the 40 spline, but most people do the trophy truck axle. You will never break a trophy truck axle. These are on trucks for years and years and years, winning Baja races, winning Mint 400, winning Vegas Torino, whatever, that's your axle. So now let's talk about how we weld those in. So if you wanna walk over here, on this rear end here, these snouts have this V groove right here. And when that matches up to the flat tube of the rear end, we have a very large fill of weld we need to make. And we wanna ensure that the whole side of the tube, basically look at it as this whole side of the piece of tubing, we're welding from the bottom all the way up with 100% penetration. This weld right here is somewhere between seven and 10 passes of welding. So very critical that this gets done properly. It takes a lot of time because it has to get weld, then cool, then weld again. So they go back and forth and go to other products through the shop. So that's why these take quite a bit of time to do. We also do the rosette holds, which you'll watch the drill process on that with a heavy chamfer. Same reason is we have that heavy chamfer because we burn the bottom of the tube of the chamfer with a rod into the snout. So there's four spots there for that. And that keeps this rear end to the snout intact as much as possible. four-link rear end. So when we construct the four-link tower here, uh, it has all these different plates with the different gussets. We also weld these washers on the outside of both tabs, so when the bolt, the nut, and the other washer we use goes out there, it doubles up the thickness of the material there and adds a lot more surface area under the bolt, and that prevents a lot of ovaling out of the holes if your hardware ever comes loose. Uh, so that is something we add. Uh, these are all gusseted up here as well as internally gusseted behind here. Another feature we have here is we use these big fill caps um, this is standard on both of our housings, and so we have this billet piece that we machine here that gets welded on, as well as this is a billet aluminum 
uh, cap. It has an O-ring seal. Uh, we lighten up the back of it as well. Um, it's knurled on the outside so you can grab it to loosen it. And we also uh, machine it in here so you can put a socket on there to tighten it or get it off if you had to. And the other thing we do on the rear end here is we machine a high quality fitting on the outside for the vent. So we don't use a really small vent. We don't have you kind of use a pipe tap threaded vent. We actually weld the fitting on here to screw on the vent. It's way higher quality. And then on the bottom here, um, you can see with that bash guard welded on, we also have a billet piece here with a pipe plug for the drain. We put the drain on the bottom there so it gets most of that fluid out um, without spilling out the front when you pull off the diff. So as you can see, a lot goes into these orangs. Uh, we really want to explain this to you. If you guys have any questions, please ask. Uh, go into the comments, ask a question if you want. Uh, you can email us, sales at cambird.com. Check out our website at cambird.com. Uh, hit the subscribe, share our videos, tell your friends. Uh, more tech talk coming soon. Thanks for watching our video.